Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I'm off the stars and here we are just after Easter and I'm sitting in a retreat, uh, a beautiful retreat area, of, uh, a Catholic retreat that I know about in the Los Angeles area. And I was reading a book in their library called Meeting Jesus Again for the First Time by a gentleman named Marcus J. Borg. Uh, Meeting Jesus Again for the First Time, published in 1994. And so I read the first part of it, because I love philosophical discussion, and I found this person very interesting to read. Uh, and I'd just like to talk a little about, about one uh, passage that I read uh, in the book. And this passage has to do with the question of what he calls omnipresence and transcendence of God. That's one way of, of expressing it. And, and he was puzzling over in his youth about that. Is God up in heaven or is God everywhere? That was what was going on. Let's see. And uh, so if God were everywhere, that would be that God is omnipresent. That's what I get. And if God were up in heaven, that would be transcendent, higher than, transcending uh, the reality that we see, right? So he was a young person when he first started thinking about this, and he had some trouble with it, trying to figure it out. And this, what he began to think was that um, God was up in heaven, he thought, but God was capable of being anywhere if he wanted to be. Right? So, so that was one of his first decisions that he made. And he made, a, a, and apparently went past that after that. It was very interesting. And uh, he came to the conclusion that that way of thinking, that God is up in heaven but capable of being anywhere he wants to be. Like with, for instance, I would say someone who's praying very hard and very fervently to experience the presence of God. Like I could jump jump down from heaven and be with that person anytime he wanted to, right? But, but Marcus Borg says that this reduces the notion of God's omnipresence to a magical notion of his, his potential ability to be anywhere. I'm paraphrasing so as not to infringe on copyright. So so that caught my eye, this, in, this idea that omnipresence, that some people have the notion that omnipresence has to do with being able to jump to anybody's... Um, it's something that, that I've discussed in prior blogs uh, as, as flowing through people or temporarily obsessing, you know, flowing through their energy field if it, in fact, take, takes place uh, through a spiritual teacher or a guru or like that, it, it involves mixing of astral matter um, between the person who is in form, the guru or spiritual teacher, and the student or whoever it is that he is temporarily obsessing. We call that channeling, too. It's channeling if... Um, it's channeling if the presence that is flowing through us is has uh, extremely pure astral energy, like not even astral, but higher than astral energy, like the angel realm, for instance, has the kind of energy that flows through a person and purifies and uplifts everything. Now, people... Um, in the days when the angel realm was not as available to us prior to the shift as as the angel realm is today, people would rely on gurus and spiritual teachers who would who would attempt this omnipresent feat, which Marcus Borg calls um, a magic potentiality to 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 jump into people and. I know nobody's been talking about this because in the past people have considered that this was ubiquity or omnipresence. But, but I, what I'm saying right now is that for those who, 
who are within the slipstream of time and space in the fourth or fifth or third dimension, not, not as high as the fifth dimension or Christ consciousness. For those who are less than Christ consciousness in their awareness, then this slipping into people really does not represent uh, omnipresence or ubiquity. Instead, it represents a mixing of on the uh, on the astral plane of both the good and the bad energy, the light and the dark energy of both people of of the even if it's a, an ascended master, nevertheless there will be in order for that person to manifest in this reality, he or she will have uh, dark tangles in their body of light and and that's a prerequisite for being in the third dimension for being born okay because that's what the nature of this reality is here so so when the spiritual teacher the guru or the ascended master in form comes through the um, energy field through the central vertical power current of a person there is a mixing of the samskaras of the tangles of the etheric net of both both people the spiritual teacher, the guru, or the ascended master goes back out of the experience adulterated with the samskaras of the student or the person that he is, quote-unquote, obsessing. The student remains with the tangles and samskaras of, of, the, of the person that he looks up to. Ha! Huh. And so, <laughs> to get back to this quote, so that, that was my reasoning on this, and then I saw this quote. It says, uh, magical potentiality to be anywhere. Is this ubiqu ubiquity, or is it omnipresence? And the answer is no, because it involves a magical quality. Now, magic, magic is a quality of the of the subconscious and unconscious mind. Um, magic is involves lack of awareness, lack of, of understanding of what's going on. If we knew what was going on, we'd never mix our energy field with that of another grounded being. We would attempt to ma maintain our own auric or energy field integrity intact and to have those kinds of interactions only with our celestial ascension teams which have the kind of energy that can purify and and um, free free us from karmas purify our energy field and free us from karmas but because of this this magic quality of the type of ubiquity or omnipresence that is practiced on earth, um, people don't realize what is really going on, frequently don't realize the adulteration of the uh, astral matter that's taking place between two people that practice this. Further, I'd like to say that um, that it's inappropriate to worship or bow down to a person who professes to have this kind of omnipresence or ubiquity. It's inappropriate to do so. Let us reserve our adoration for God and only God for the very highest, for the source of all that is. And that way we can never go wrong about it. You know, and in that way, in fact, we may achieve uh, a thorough understanding, uh, an innate understanding of of these qualities of God, of transcendence and immanence. We will know because we will experience within ourselves and beyond ourselves in all creation, God, the presence, the living presence of God's love and light and joy. Well, so. So that's it for this one. I, I, I'd like to recommend this book uh, for your reading.
Once more, I'm Meeting Jesus Again for the First Time by Marcus J. Borg, published in 1994. And so, and so, may you all be blessed in this time of great light and great energy and a chance to, to move up into the speediest timelines, huh? A chance to be in the highest dimensions and the best timelines. God bless you all.